For my next realistic car drawing, I'm going to be doing Matt Armstrong's Rolls-Royce Man Sorry, and I'm going to be guiding you through the entire process from start to finish. So let's just dive straight into it. So this right here is the reference that I'm going to be working from. We have the original Matt Armstrong alloys before Mansori changed them, but I'm also going to be adding in the pinstripe that goes all the way down the side here because that's not actually present on this image. So I started by printing out the image. I then cut up all the white space around it, and then I drew a grid onto it using a 0.3 millimeter uni pin fine liner. So I then drew the exact same grid from my photograph in terms of aspect ratio onto my piece of paper. So this one here is actually 1.4 times bigger than the grid that is on my reference photo. So now I've done all of that boring preparation work, I can now move into doing the actual sketch. And I started on like the front wheel here and it was actually a pain in the backside to do because on the image, it's really dark and blurry, which means it's really hard to see details. And I'll be interested to see if I can actually create a realistic effect on it a bit later. I then basically continued all the way to the right here, just really kind of using the grid method to get all those reference points to really gauge where everything needs to go. And if you are considering drawing cars and stuff, I would highly recommend using the grids because you do just get loads more reference reference points to almost guarantee that everything is as accurate as it can possibly be before you go in and start coloring, which is really important because no amount of good coloring or shading can fix a dodgy sketch. So there you go. We are now about an hour and a half into this project and it's finally time to start adding in some color, more specifically with the alcohol markers. But there are two very important things that we need to do just quickly before we get onto the markers. And that's rubbing out the grid lines furthest away from the subject so they don't smudge whilst we're coloring it in. But I am leaving the ones closest to it so I can still use that grid that reference photo to gauge where shadows and blocks of tone need to go and then I go over the entire subject with a kneadable eraser to remove the excess graphite that would otherwise get trapped behind the alcohol marker layer and leave really dark ugly lines that would show through in the final result and just like that our sketch is now ready for the alcohol markers. So the exact markers that I'm going to be using for this project are a variety of cool and warm greys as well as a black for the darkest shadows. I'm obviously going to be using some reds for the rear light and some yellows for the number plate. So I started on the far left here with the front wheel and because I couldn't really see what was going on I kind of made up lots of the structures with the black marker so all the alloys there and then I went in with some gradually lighter and lighter markers to add in the tonal variation to make it look 3D. So I then just continue working my way to the right here just jotting in where all the shadows and highlights need to go and the reason I'm doing all of this is to act as a base left for the colored pencils a bit later because what can happen when you're doing colored pencils just straight onto white paper is you can often get those like white speckles showing through and they really tip the pigment on top. But if you've got like grey down already, then the grey pencils on top will look really nice and saturated and solid like actual car panels. So this is the result after an hour of working with the markers and it's now time to work on the most detailed section, the rear wheel. So the way I did this back tire was pretty similar to how I did the front one by using that black marker just to establish all like the spokes of the alloy, if that's the correct terminology. And then I basically used the cool gray nine and the cool gray eight to do the tire part. And then I used the chisel tip, so the sharp part of it to do the treads of the tire and also some thinner parts around the spokes as well. And then I went in with a cool gray seven and a cool gray five just to go over the spokes to blend them into the piece. And all that was left to do now was work my way further to the back. And again, using that sharp part of the chisel tip to do all like those really thin lines that are separating all the panels to keep everything really nice and crisp. So I'm actually pretty happy with how this is looking. It's taken around three and a half hours to get it to this stage. As I said, this is just a base layer. So it's now time to take it to the next level using the colored pencils. So for this project, I'm going to use the ever reliable Faber-Castell polychromos, more specifically the light cobalt turquoise, the Payne's gray, a variety of cool grays, a variety of warm grays. So these have more of like a brownie hint to them than what the cool grays do. A white pencil, a black pencil, and I have a feeling by the end of this project, they're going to look a bit more like this. So with that said, let's sharpen these up and get straight to it. So I started the pencil work to the far left here on the front wheel, which was literally the bane of my existence because you can't see any of the details on the reference photo. So I was kind of making it up and I don't think I put in enough like spokes in the marker base. So I had to add in some ones with the colored pencils and then I think I put in too many and then they weren't the correct distance from one another. They're all different lengths where they shouldn't have been. And it was a bit of a mess. So I ended up just really darkening that area like the reference photo. So it was a bit of a bodge job. But I think it still looks quite realistic because you need to bear in mind that this is quite far away from the camera. So it will be less detailed detailed than the wheel that's closest. So it does help with the perspective, but again, it was a bit of a bodge job, but that's just between you and I. So I then started working on the panels and using a technique that I like to call layering. And it really is as simple as it sounds. So in one layer, I'll add in like the most basic details that I can see. I'll then go over with a lighter color to really blend it all together. And then on top of this, I'll then go back in and add some more details and bring the contrast up again. Because what happens when you go over a darker color with a lighter color, you do reduce the contrast of it. And the key to making drawings pop is for them to have high contrast. So it is important 
important that you go back in with those darker colors to bring that contrast back up. And what this layering effect does is by each individual layer that you do, the pencil work gets gradually smoother because all the pencil layers are like blending with one another, if that makes sense. So you end up with a relatively smooth finish. So this right here is the result after around two hours of work. And if you look a bit closer, you can see that it is still slightly grainy. And after I've done the um, pencil work on the entire car, I'll do something weird that you've probably never seen before that will really help get rid of those grains and take it to the next level. So yeah, let's get back to finishing off the pencil work. So when it came to doing the glass here, you can actually see the trees through the windows, but I didn't actually want to show this because obviously I'm not including the background. So it doesn't really make any sense to be able to see a tree and then it just stops. I mean, I know I am including the reflections on the main bodywork, but that just kind of works a bit better than just seeing like a random part of a tree that doesn't appear like in the background. So coming back down to doing the panels, I did start to encounter a problem with my layering method. And it's the fact that I started to oversaturate the page. And what this means is that there's too much pigment down so that the pigment I'm trying to put onto the page from like more pencils just slides around and creates these really blotchy layers because it's got nothing to grip onto because obviously the tooth of the paper has already been covered up by all the pigment that is already down on the page. So I was kind of getting in a bit of a flap about my layering method falling apart because it does normally work really quite well with just normal colors, but apparently not so well when using grays. So I decided to start working on the wheel and I basically did this by going in with the black pencil and just crisped up all the details like the spokes and you can see a bit of the brake caliper behind it as well. And I then went in with some gradually lighter and lighter tones just to add in all the tonal variation to make it look nice in 3D. And I was actually really pleased with how this was looking. I think in the marker base, I managed to capture all the details relatively accurately. I mean, there were a couple of spokes that I had to adjust a bit, but you can see here that the spokes at the top and the bottom of the wheel are the longest ones. And then they gradually get shorter as they get to the sides here. And this really helps to give it that three quarter view. So there you go. It's taken around seven and a half hours to get it to the stage, which is actually fairly quickly compared to like some of my other drawings. And yeah, I'll just finish off the back here and then we can move on to the final stage, which is where it will really come to life. So it turns out just finished the back off was actually quite an understatement because towards the back here, we actually have quite a few reflections going on. There's obviously a bit more detail as well. So it actually took a lot longer to do than what I initially anticipated. So I was kind of hoping to do the pencil work all in one day, but I haven't managed to do um, the back here. I've kind of hit a bit of like an art wall so I don't particularly want to push through it and rush it and ruin everything I've done so far. So I'm just going to go to sleep and I'll come back to it tomorrow. So I shall see you over there. So I started off today all guns absolutely blazing and just finished off all the grey panels at the back here, ready to move on to doing the rear light. I just want to quickly point out that to do this rear light here, I'm actually going to be using eight different shades of red. So in order to actually do the real light here, I basically went in and just emphasized what was already down from the marker base. And then I went over the entire thing with a white pencil to make it look like there's natural glass film on top of it, which there is in real life. So now I've done the real light, I can now move into doing the number plate using these colors. So to actually do the number plate, I went in just establishing all the numbers and letters. And then I went in with those yellows that you just saw to add in all the tonal variation, again, using lots of layers to try and keep it as smooth as possible. But if I'm being honest, I just hate working with yellows because they always seem quite blotchy and they just never blend as well as some of the other colors in the Faber-Castell Polychromo set. So I've now been from left to right and given everything a good coverage of pencils, but what I want to do now is go from left to right again and just pick up on some things that I missed the first time on looking at certain areas, just adding in more details, smoothing out the blends. And once I've done that, I can then go in and add a shadow to really ground it on the page. And something that I almost forgot to do was adding in the pinstripe, which goes all the way along the side here. So that's pretty much the pencil work done. So I can now move into using my secret weapon and this is something called a colorless blender and it's basically an alcohol marker that doesn't have any pigment in the ink so it's pretty much just pure alcohol and what I do is I go over the entire drawing with it and what it does is it dissolves the colored pencil pigment and pushes it further into the tooth of the paper and really helps to make it look even smoother than what it already is. So yeah this drawing took just over 12 hours to complete which is actually pretty quick compared to some of my other drawings but if you have enjoyed watching me bring Matt Armstrong's Rolls-Royce Man story to life on paper I'm sure you'll love the video that's appeared on screen right now. So yeah, I shall see you over there.